The third quarter of this year was rife with bearish sentiment leading to risk-off actions in global capital markets. Uh, Vitiva Capital Market has a new report that looks at the third quarter capital market meltdown. Shanghai Composite Index, mainline China down 11%. The MSCI World Index down 6.5%. The DAX in Germany down 5.6% just read everywhere. Joining us to discuss further is the author of the report, Chido Zay Daniels, Capital Markets Analyst with Vitiva Capital Management Leader. Chido Zay, a very welcome. Good morning to you. Let's get it on. So we've got this, well, let's put that chart up. This big blood red chart. Yeah, there it is. Good gracious. So um, what do we attribute all this to? I mean, you just seen red everywhere. The third quarter was just ugly. Was this central bank rate hikes, recession fears, or a cocktail mix of factors? What happened? Um, thank you for having me on. So what we've basically seen in the third quarter is investors' reaction to the latest rate hikes from central bankers around the world. We've seen the Fed raise rates to about 3.25% um, in response to inflation. Now, why are we seeing broad-based sell-off across global markets? When you have rate hikes, we believe that investors... Um, investors avoid the um, equities market as a result of this because they will pursue higher interest rates in the um, fixed income market. But also the fact that higher interest rates tend to weigh on global growth. This, bring, this drives up the cost of borrowing for businesses, but also the cost of servicing governments. So um, what we've seen in global markets is basically investors reacting to um, the rate hikes and the, and the potential impact on the global economy. So recession fears are in there, but those recession fears have been heightened as a result of the rate hikes. When you have rate hikes, you have a restriction of liquidity to the market, and this makes it difficult for risk on assets such as equities, um, alternative investment like Bitcoin, for instance. When you have um, this rise in risk of sentiment in the market as a result of these rate hikes, you expect to see um, a shortfall, I mean, you expect to see losses in the equities market as investors pivot from equities into fixed income. Okay, great. Now, so thanks for setting the stage. So you look at your Jerome Powell's, your Christine Lagarde's, uh, which of course, uh, Fed governor, uh, then of course the ECB head, and then you know, Mr. Andrew Bailey, they've all had a, one, one level of drama or the other. Um, looking at ahead at the fourth quarter, because we know the Fed is looking at, they're going to yes. raise. I think tomorrow the ECB is going to hike as well. Yes. Uh, Bank of England, I hear the um, Mr. Sunak and their new mini budget, their new budget outlay, which is coming forward, is being delayed to allow for the Bank of England to make a decision. So, if you look ahead to the fourth quarter, yes, are the markets going to price that in, or are we going to see another bloodbath in the fourth quarter due to more hikes from these guys? I believe investors are watching for inflation prints in these main countries. Okay, when you okay. see. If we expect to see, um, if we see rises in inflation, there's a very possibility that um, there's a very possibility that the central banks will raise interest rates. So um, I don't believe that's been priced into the market yet, okay. as um, there are still lots of factors and other drivers that investors are watching. So the key driver, we, the key driver to monitor would be where inflation prints, because it would give us guidance on what direction mm. the central banks will be going in. Okay, let's move to Africa now. Uh, another chart here, which looks at, I think, the returns, and we put a little blue arrow on that one Q3 return, which I think was for uh, Kenya, the yes. Nairobi Securities Exchange. Looks like Kenya performed better than their peers. Uh, would you look at the NGX in Nigeria, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, JSC in South Africa, the GSC, which is Ghana, and then the Frontier Markets Index, which I guess aggregates everything. So what, and I think we have another chart after this. What, what has, what, what's, what did, what, why did Kenya come out ahead? Okay, so we had um, political risks um, in Kenya, which had, which had um, triggered sell-offs um, at the, um, pre, pre the election. Now, following the election, we saw improved investor confidence, primarily from international investors, which then um, led to, I believe, um, about 13 billion yeah. shillings in, um, of inflows into the Kenyan market. So as a result of um, the, the election, which um, the central, the not, sorry, not central bank, which the Supreme Court ratified, because it was challenged by um, Odinga, I believe. Yep. Yes, um, the victory was challenged, but following the um, ratification from the Supreme Court, which um, ruled that um, William Ruto was the winner, we saw improved investor confidence from international investors flowed back into the Kenyan market. So that was what drove 
um, the gains towards the end of the quarter in Q3. See, so it's interesting how e elections have consequences and elections have yes. impacts on markets. Uh, so looking at Ruto going forward, um, what kind of impact do you think you, he's going to have on, on, on the markets? Um, it, it will, I believe investors will be monitoring how they plan to address um, the inflation situation in the country. Um, Kenyan inflation is about 9.2%. Um, that was the last print for the latest month. Yeah. Um, the central bank in Kenya as well has also been raising rates. But also investors will be paying attention to how he plans to um, address the economy moving forward, given that we have a new administration in place. So um, investors, investors, given how investors um, behaved and reacted to the election decision, um, in Q3, we expect this to be positive for, for um, the Kenyan market, and we believe that the Kenyan market should, should fare well in Q4. Well, good for them. Good for Kenya. Bring it to Nigeria now. You, yes. got, another, you got another chart looking at some sectors for the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Yes. The industrial sector down by about 17%, yes. consumer goods down by 63 and oil and gas down by 6.8. What, 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 what was there? Is it the same general meltdown yes, from everywhere else? It's the um, prim primary risk of sentiment that we've seen from um, global investors that has also filtered into our local market. We already know that our central bank has raised rates um, twice this year, so to about 15.50%. Um, so we've seen some um, fund managers exit the equity space into the um, fixed income space. So. Primarily, that was what really drove um, the losses that we saw across the broad-based losses that we saw in the NGX yeah. in the third quarter. I want to ask you in particular. Again, it's the sector, the Q3 sector chart for 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 Nigeria. The um, industrials for for cement. So industrials are down seventeen percent. Now, yes. a lot has been said about infrastructure in this country, right? Yes. The president at his, President Buhari now, at the last ministerial, well, his last ministerial retreat, he talked a lot about how many roads had been built, right? Yes. Um, in fact, there was, a, we just played, a, there's an ad from one of the biggest cement producers in the country on the roads that yes. they're building. Right, right. So look, when you when you look at all the, in the infrastructure demand in this country mm -hmm. and how much, I mean, the governor of Bielsa State, he talks a lot about how many roads he's built. How is it that you've got industrials down by double digits, but it's this bad? Isn't it, shouldn't it be the other way around? When you think about the demand for infrastructure and building and this and that, shouldn't the industrials be doing better? Yes, the industrial, the industrial space is actually doing okay, but it can definitely improve, given the, that um, over the next 30 years, we're going to need about $3 trillion exactly. in investments into the sector. And um, we're currently not doing near that amount per year. Um, but as I had earlier mentioned, the broad, as you can see from the indexes, the losses were broad-based. Um, Danksem, particularly that, that um, the quarter, um, closed lower, closed lower, and it's as a large, um, it's a big market cap company, so which also affected the performance of the industrial goods sector. But as I earlier mentioned, um, the sector is doing okay, but there's definitely room for improvement. Um, there's about a three trillion dollar gap in infrastructure that that remains to be filled, mm. and this actually presents a unique, um, interesting opportunity for the industrial goods space which we believe that um over time they, they will be able to improve their performance but like i said we have um global risk of sentiments across all sectors mm. you know and that filtered into the nigerian market i gotta ask you we just put this whole chart up where you saw the you were, you're looking at by market cap best performances and i think there's a very i don't know what if this was, this was you uh this was bad luck, but so Airtel, <laughs> Airtel Africa, best performer, I think that's one year, right? Yeah, yes. So one year. Yes. And in fact, there was one of the few sectors, uh, it, along with Boa Foods, that was in positive region in, in yes. Q3. But Airtel last week. Yes. I mean, what was it? 27% drop? 27.10, I believe. Good gracious Lord. Well, so what, 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 what was behind that? Okay, so we already know that Airtel... Um, Due to its dual listing on the London Stock Exchange, we've seen some investors use it as an avenue to move out um, FX, I mean, to repatri repatriate their FX um, investments in the country. So what triggered the, um, what triggered the sell-offs last week was that we had some investors looking to take advantage of the arbitrage opportunity by selling 
their um their Nigerian listings and then looking to buy it on the London Stock Exchange. So we believe that was what primarily drove mm. the significant losses that we saw in Airtel last week. Incredible. Right after you put that chart where they did well for the year. <laughs> yes. Ghana, we had to quickly talk about Ghana. My word. Ghana, they just the, the issues this is their third consecutive quarter on quarter loss. What's happening in Ghana? I mean, worst performing pro currency, the C D, mm -hmm. they're looking to money in the IMF and their yeah. their market is down for you know, what's happening there? So we've had um, Ghana is dealing with um, primarily fiscal fiscal concerns. Um, there's also a large FX demand that's been failed to be met by the um, government. Um, so I believe uh, last week or so, the bank had an auction. The, the Bank of Ghana had an FX auction where investors asked for a um, hundred million. And it was only the bank, 25, 25, yes. 25 million that they offered. million that they were <laughs> able to offer. So um, in the response to that, we saw the wow. CD fall drastically in the two days after that. And that's just primarily been the issue in, in, with Ghana is that they, they're, they're um, FX, FX liquidity concerns, you have record high inflation. Um, inflation is, uh, last print was about 37.2%. It's been accelerating for the past, I believe, um, it's been excellent for the past, for the past year, yeah. pretty much, you know. Um, investor confidence in the country is low um, because of the um, FX challenges that they're facing, but also the fiscal challenges that they have. Ghana has a lot of debt that it took on in response to COVID, mm. and that has, um, that has um, weighed on the country's um, FX, FX um, reserves, which, as you can see, has also affected, it has affected investor confidence in the country. Um, fine, we only got 30 seconds left. Is there a buying opportunity with everything that we've looked at here? Uh, bargain hunting, that's just, that to say. Um, we believe um, investors should primarily focus on safe fundamental mm. stocks. Um, we've seen a lot of sell-offs um, across global markets. And um, with, in particular with um, Africa, um, there's, a risk, there's a risk of sentiment to our markets from international investors. Mm. They'll prefer to choose um, the safety of the U.S. dollar due to the rate hikes, yeah. um, and as a result of that, um, that would that would definitely continue to weigh on investor confidence in our. But however, there are select. We believe that there are select fundamentally sound counters yeah. that investors could look to snap up um, in the last quarter of the year. Great report. I really enjoyed reading it. We're out of time. There's so much more we could have jumped in South Africa, for instance. We didn't get there. But yes. look, we'll have you back. We'll talk more about this really great report. Uh, Chido Z. Daniels, uh, Capital Markets Analyst with Fativa Capital Management Limited. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.